Hey everybody, welcome to my channel again. It's Joe Jaguar. Uh, again, um, uh, I don't want to keep on uh, every video saying why I call myself that. You'll eventually see a few videos that have why I do. Uh, today's topic is uh, a little different than I'm just talking about filters. Now my last um, video was about the planetary filters, so I hope I put that in order. I uh, hope I don't put this one before that one. Then it wouldn't make sense what I just said. Anyway, nebula filters, sometimes also called uh, light pollution filters, are basically made for one specific item, which is to see nebulas. Uh, a nebula is basically like a, a sun that's exploded uh, out in space and that elements or that gas is what you end up seeing. Um, so there's basically like four different types of nebulas. Uh, you've got the dark nebula, emission nebula, planetary nebulas, and reflection nebulas. So basically, in the inch and a quarter, let's say there's basically four levels of filters you can get. So the first one will block a little bit uh, of, of light, um, and, and it, lets, you know, it blocks certain, uh, a little bit where you, s you get a little bit of contrast. The second level will block more light, letting other parts of the nebula shine through, giving you more contrast. The only thing is what you've got to take into consideration or, or uh, understand is that as you go up in levels, yes, it blocks more. So if you have a small scope, I wouldn't recommend going to the third or fourth level uh, type of thing because it just blocks so much light, the image might be really dim. Now, it doesn't matter if you're in the country, um, in the city, uh, or in the middle somewhere. Um, if you want to see those items better, this would definitely help. It doesn't matter where you are. Uh, of course, in, in the country, you'll, you'll see those items fairly well, but this could actually bring out the contrast even more. So it's not like only people who live in the city can benefit from these. It, you can be in the country. Uh, like, for instance, uh, when I'm in the gray zone, which is the second best zone, it still complements you know, very well. Okay, so the first level, uh, and I have a Thousand Oaks, there's Lumicon, there's different companies, they're, they're all pretty good. So the first level is a broadband filter. It dims the starlight the least, uh, lets more of the nebula come through. But again, this is like, I would say, the level one. So it's a broadband filter. In general, you can also, if you live in the city, you, sometimes they call it the light pollution filter. So it blocks a lot of the light pollution so you can see the nebula better. So um, remember, so if you have a small scope, this might be uh, the only one to use. Um, next up is the broadband filter. So it darkens the sky more, but it lets other emissions through. So you'll see a bit more contrast in this one. But again, if you have a small scope, it might darken it too much. So if you have a four to six inch, uh, would, would be okay. Um, it should be fine. Now, in my other video where I say the uh, planetary filters are basically just colored glass, these ones, the coatings that they put on here, you know, I've read where they put 50 to 60, sometimes even 70 co coatings of this filter on here. So it is not cheap. Like one of these, Filters are probably about $149 to $169 each filter before tax. Uh, of course, I'm ta talking about Canada because that's where I live. So if you live in the U.S., you would divide that by 1.3 roughly. Uh, if you're in the U.K., 1.6 roughly. Um, but it amounts to the same amount anyway. So they're not so cheap. Um, so I would say, you know, buy them one at a time. The next level up is called an oxygen three. Now, as the name suggests, this um, blocks all the light except the O3 part of the spectrum and lets that part in. Uh, so basically, again, what I would just keep it simple. This blocks this is the third level. What I recommend, like what I consider to be the third level, um, it blocks more starlight. So again, you should have something between a six to eight inch, or if the image is just going to be too dim. Um, but it does allow you to see a little bit more contrast in some of those uh, nebulas type of thing. The next one, I'm just going to say, I'm just considering it like the fourth level. Not too many people have because it's only really for about five or six different things. 
Now it's called, well, this one is the Lumicon version, and it's called the H-beta filter. Now what this one's good for is something like the Flame Nebula, the California Nebula, um, oh, what's the, uh, the Horsehead Nebula. So there's, you know, there's a couple more things, uh, maybe even the Helix on this one, but it's, um, it's not meant for all of them. It blocks so much light that it's just really made for a select few number of things. So if you are on a, a tight budget, um, really, I would say, I don't know, most people, if you can only buy one, just buy the narrow band filter. That's probably the best overall. It doesn't dim it too much, lets in a, a nice amount of contrast. Uh, now, if you have a smaller scope uh, type of thing, then maybe it, you go for the broadband, where at least they'll dim just the slightest amount compared to the four, uh, but it lets you see the nebulas a little bit better. Now, over here, and I'm just going to actually show you how it's done. So basically, what you do, let's just say the broadband filter, you just screw it at the bottom, just like you would a, uh, any type of filter for your eyepiece. The planetary filter would work like that too. So this is just a simple super colossal, and then you put that in your focuser, and there you go, focus. Uh, so all four of them do the same. Of course, every time you go up in power or you change eyepieces, you have to thread and unthread it. So, um, so when you have three, four filters and you're changing power all the time, um, it's a, a little bit of a hassle. Normally what I would do is find the power uh, that you like the best, so start at the low power, go up uh, until you know the nebula is nice in the frame and the eyepiece, and then try each one type of thing, instead of you know switching the filter and you know, 10 different eyepieces, that's, uh, you, you're going to get a little bored doing that. Over here, I have the Orion Sky Glow, so this is a 2 inch eyepiece, of course, I'm using my Mead uh, Super Wide Angle, 32 millimeter 2 inch eyepiece. Uh, so again, you would do the same thing, you would just thread it at the bottom, put it in your 2 inch diagonal this time, instead of in the inch and a quarter diagonal, and start viewing. Uh, so this is a sky glow, so sometimes it's called the light pollution filter. Um, and then here is your narrow band. Again, that is a probably, the, probably the most popular one. And then just put in your eyepiece and view. Uh, so that's for two inch eyepieces. And that is nebula filters. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. So uh, unlike you know the planetary filters where I basically told you guys probably don't even get them because it's so minimal uh, advantage you'll see in the nebula filters you'll see a good amount of contrast and gain boost so I would definitely recommend if you want to see nebulas regardless if you're in the city the suburbs or the dark country skies it will definitely you'll, you'll come in handy and you'll see a good improvement it just really depends on what size telescope you have if you have a small telescope Stay on the level one or two, broadband, narrow band. If you have a medium one, narrow band, O3. And if you have a large one, and again, the H beta filter is just for about five or six different things. So it's very specialized. But if you want to see those things, those five or six items, and you don't mind paying uh, 150 bucks plus tax, you know, it could go up to 200, uh, then try it. Um, you can always wait to see uh, if you see some in the used market because a lot of times you will and you can save some money there. Now maybe on the used market some of these uh, you might see it for about 99 bucks instead of uh, 150 before tax. So that might save you about you know 30 to 40 percent right there. Anyway guys, cheers. Thanks for subscribing, uh, commenting, and uh, liking my videos. I will see you guys on the next one.